Hey everybody, uh, Luther here from uh, Luther's Woodworking. Um, today we are going to be talking about baskets. Uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, I had made some baskets so uh, a couple months back and I've had a few people uh, ask me about how I put things together or how I did it and where I got the pattern and all this stuff. So I'm going to do a little video here. It's going to be maybe a long video um, on making a complete basket. And the baskets that I'm talking about, I'll just move my camera here and I'll show you. These baskets here, and I've made several of these baskets. This is a yellow one right here. And I, I say yellow because the, um, the strips that go down here, I got them painted yellow. <clears throat> um, this basket originally came with a handle that goes on the basket. I didn't like the handle. I just wanted to have the basket, so I just kind of left that out. But I made uh, several of these baskets. Um, here's a red one I made with the red stained uh, pieces. Um, and then I also did a green one right here. And then I have these little um, fancy uh, upholstery tacks here to go around. And then also I did a I did a red, white, and blue one just for goofing around. Um, so yeah, they all turned out pretty nice. And um, but they are kind of uh, trouble seeing a little bit of trouble putting them together. I mean, you there is a technique of putting these together. They can be frustrated at times. I know the first one I built, I built it with the handle, and. It didn't turn out exactly the way I wanted it. Um, so from that one on, I made them without the handle. I just wanted a basket. I didn't want really a, a picnic basket or anything. I just wanted a plain basket. Um, so that's why I started doing them without the handle. Just one less thing that I got to worry about. So today, I'm going to do a video on start to finish on uh, making these baskets. Now, I use quality uh, select pine when I do these baskets because there's no knots, no imperfections. Because when you start doing these baskets, you got a lot of these, uh, all these narrow rings, and it doesn't take much to break these rings. Believe me, I have broken them. So, I, I get the best quality pine that I can buy, nice and clear, and that's what I use for the basket. I already got my blue tape on the board here and I got my pattern attached to that. Now you can see on this pattern, and don't worry about any of these, this writing and words on this pattern. You can see on this pattern, this pattern is complete with the handle. This part right here is the handle. It goes completely around the uh, basket. But we're not gonna worry about that handle. That's why on this right here, if you can see it, I got a line drawn right across here. And that's where we're going to cut. We're going to cut across on this here line at a 90 degree, and we're going to cut that handle off. This piece right here is going to be our first piece right here around. And that would be this top piece right here. That's, that's going to be the first piece. We're going to leave the handle off. So when we go to the saw, we're just going to cut a 90 degrees Leave the saw set at 90 degrees and cut completely around that. Then once we cut that, we're going to, if you can see here on this basket design, once we cut this handle off, then we're going to tilt the saw to 18 degrees. Here it says 18 degrees right here. We're going to tilt it 18 degrees and we're going to cut it in here and then we're going to follow this all the way around at 18 degrees. And we're going to do that to each, each ring. There's five rings. Then you got the, bo the bottom of the basket. Um, so we're going to head over to the saw and start this cut. And then I'll, I'll talk to you uh, as I'm doing it. And then also with this basket, um, I enlarged this pattern 11 to 11 inches wide, 16 and 3 quarter inches long. Um, and I'll explain to you um, a little bit about that as uh, when we get more into making this basket because that makes a big difference. The size you have this basket will make a big difference in the width and the thickness of these pieces that slide down. So that's 
and 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 I, I wanted to um, make this basket a little bigger than what uh, I found in the pattern, so that's why I decided to go at eleven by sixteen three quarter. I can use a complete one by twelve um, piece of board. So we're gonna head over to the scroll saw and make our first cut here, and um, then uh, we'll continue on with the rest of the basket. All right, here we are at the scroll saw. Um, just to let you know, I got a number five reverse tooth blade, skip tooth blade here from Pegas. A modified geometry blade that I'm using. I, I find a number five works well for cutting uh, three quarter inch uh, board. So we're gonna just start to cut anywhere on this edge here and come in here and cut that handle completely off. Now you wanna take your time when you cut these baskets out because you want everything, you don't wanna force your cut so you don't, you want nice 90 degree uh, edges on these here.
Okay, so we are done cutting that handle off. We're not going to need this handle part for this uh, basket. So now you just got the, um, the basket without the handle. And our next cut, if you look on the pattern, is going to be cutting in on here at 18 degrees. And you're going to follow this completely around at 18 degrees all the way around. So let me get my saw set up at 18 degrees, and then we'll be right back. Okay, um, I got my saw set at 18 degrees. Now, some scroll saws, the table uh, tilts. Some, the on my saw, the arm tilts. Um, if you have not cut at an angle uh, before with a scroll saw, I would suggest probably practicing a little bit because it is a little different cutting on an angle like that than rather straight. Um, what's nice about this saw here is the, the arm tilts so the table is still straight. But if you've got a saw that table tilts and the arm stays straight, um, it might be a little bit more uh, trickier to do. So I would suggest um, getting some practice in on cutting um, at an angle before you start actually cutting your, your project. So um, that's what I would suggest to do because it's it's a little trickier. Uh, it's been a little while since I've cut it at an angle, but I think I can figure it out once you get this started here. It's, and you wanna go slow. Um, once I come in here and make this cut, and I'm gonna follow along here, uh, the important parts of this cut are going to be staying on this line completely and letting the blade and the saw do the work. Don't push nothing because you want these uh, nice and flat. You don't want to have it uh, cupped anyway. Like You don't want your blade to bow or bend when you're cutting. So you want to let the saw do the work and cut this slow all the way around. It's going to take some time to cut this out. I may speed the video up a little bit. I usually don't do that. But uh, once you see me cut one, it's the same thing. I'm going to go in there. I'm going to go in this one. Then I'm going to come and go in this one. Go in here. Go in here. And go in here. And then everything will be cut out. So um, I might speed the video up just a little bit. But um, you'll see exactly what I'm doing as I'm cutting this out.
going to adjust my light here. Hopefully, um, you'll be able to still see um, the video good. I just need to adjust my light there. Uh, get the camera here a little better. Okay, so that is the first 
ring that will be the top ring that we have cut out and you got to take the take it out from the bottom so that right there if you can see it that is the first ring this part right here where you cut through that will be glued together so we'll just take and set that ring on the table behind me here and then we continue on with the next cut will come right in here and go completely around the whole thing you just want to make sure that you stay on the line because these are uh, real thin rings so you don't want to get one real thin accidentally you want to just stay right on the line
number two. Take that off there. Raise the bottom up. And then you'll have the other ring here. Just be careful because these will break really easy. And we will go on to the next ring. One thing I want to mention, see, I don't know if you can see right here where I started my cut and I went all the way around. See this part? It kind of hangs down below your table you saw. Just make sure as you're turning your piece, this part does not get hooked on the edge of the saw and then you turn because you'll break it. You'll break it back over here. So just make sure that as you're making your turn, kind of hold that piece up like that. So it gets on the top of your saw. Otherwise, you're going to break this piece off. I know because I have done it. So just want to throw that out there.
Okay, we got that one done. We've got two more rings to go. And I know this takes a, a little bit of time to uh, cut this basket out, but you just want to take your time when you're doing this. Coming up on the last ring.
Okay, that will do it for their rings. Uh, okay, so here's the bottom of it. We are gonna um, head over back over to the bench. I'm gonna talk a little bit about what we're gonna do next to work on this basket. And then um, we'll get started on that. Okay, we are back at the workbench here. Um, everything's all cut out. And I, I really want to emphasize uh, taking your time cutting these rings out on your basket because you don't want any part of your ring at any point to be no thinner than it really has to be. So let me just move my camera here and I'll show you what we got. Um, got the rings cut out here. When I cut them on the saw, I just take and I set them right back in the um, in the area here. So you got your base, and then you have all your rings. Now you're going to have to glue all. What the next step would be to uh, take off all this tape that you glued on. That would be the next step is to take off all this tape. And then we're going to end up gluing these pieces back together. So let me get things all set up. Let me get this tape all taken off and get things set up for gluing this all back together. And then uh, we'll be back to uh, work on that. Hey, guys, we are back um, at the bench here. Um, let me just show you what I did. I took all the, I took all the blue tape and... Uh, um, pattern off the off the basket here off to all the parts let me move my camera here a little bit show you um here we got the here's the bottom of the basket right there took all the tape off we won't need that right now but you have all your separate rings for this basket now the i didn't do any sanding on this basket yet uh we're gonna end up gluing these parts together right here need to glue each ring together where we came in and uh, saw it with a scroll saw and, and it's pretty easy all we got to do we're just going to take and kind of just go like this you can see it put a little uh, wood glue on here and I'm just going to take this here And I got these little clamps right here. We're just going to clamp that piece on there. Now you want to make sure it's clamped even on the top and bottom the best you can. Um, and then wipe off any excess glue that might come out because you don't want to spend a lot of time sanding glue. But these should fit together. You won't even see the seams probably. Um, and this, once you get this glue together, just try to get off some of that glue. Okay, so we got that clamped together and we're just going to set them aside and we're going to do that to each one of these rings we're going to glue that together i just take this here and put a little wood glue on this inside part and then just stick it together and then we're going to just put a little clamp on it You want to make sure everything's even. Hopefully you can see this. Just try to get off all the glue. 
once you sand that you won't even not you will not even see where that seam is on there okay so we'll just take that set that aside and we do the same thing to the next one here just take wood glue here. This is tight bond waterproof glue. You want to be careful handling these pieces because like I said several times these will break real easy. Once you sand that, you won't even, you hardly even see where that seam is. One more here. I'm just going to stick a little glue on there. Take your clamp. Just take your time doing this. It's going to make a big difference. You want to make sure you get this even lined up. For some reason this one's not cooperating. There we go. Once that's dried, that'll hold really good. So we'll just set this aside someplace here. All right, so got all my pieces right here. Um, all glued right here. Them are the rings. Now you got one more here. We're gonna have to glue, and that's the top portion of this of your basket. This is the top of the basket. Got to glue this right here. So we're just gonna. You're gonna have to be careful. What I do is I take it, and I spread it down, and I just kind of overlap it. Just a, I just kind of hold it, overlap it just a little bit, just to get some glue in there. And I'll get that all tight. Now, I just realized I have to go get me a clamp, so I'm going to be right back. I'm going to grab a clamp, so we'll clamp this last piece. All 
All right, so we're just going to clamp this last piece here. I'm not sure if that clamp is going to do it. It might be good just All right, so once you got your pieces, I got that pretty good there. Sometimes when you put a clamp on, the pieces want to slide out of place. I might have to hold it just a little bit on this top piece. But I think we got it. So anyway, that is the next step right there. Just to glue all your rings up, all these areas where you cut in. And once you sand that, you won't even, you can't even hardly see it on the camera. But you, that'll all dry up really nice. So, We'll be back once this is all dried. We'll take the clamps off, and the next thing is we're going to be sanding all these uh, parts. So we'll uh, see you when that's all ready to go. Hey, guys, we are back. Um, I got all the um, parts all uh, glued up. I let them sit overnight. I'll just move my camera here and show you. Um, I got the clamps. We'll take the clamps off of these here. Everything's glued up. I did not do any sanding yet. Um, take the clamps off these all. And you can see that they're all glued up really nice. Now, one thing I did do, I had, if you go back on my video and you watch when I was gluing this piece right here, this bigger piece for the top, uh, remember I had to go and get a clamp I said to clamp this together while well, this small little clamp uh, was not big enough or it didn't work very good clamping this together. It kept on, you know, sliding and stuff. Anytime you're trying to glue wood together, cut on an angle, it's going to slide. So let me just uh, tell you about a little trick that I do, and I've used this in my woodworking projects already. Um, what I did off camera, and I, um, I took, because I already had glue on this, I took this and I spread this apart. I took a little super glue, and if you take and put a little super glue in here and then put it together with wood glue, the super glue will dry faster than the wood glue. And you just hold it, the super glue will dry, and then that'll hold it in place. And then you got the wood glue in there, so when that's all dry, you got a solid, a solid joint. So that's another little trick you can do. You can use a little super glue. I buy this in the four ounce containers. But you just put a little super glue on your, um, your, first you put some wood glue down and then you put a little super glue in there and you hold it just for about 30 seconds or a minute. That super glue will dry and hold that all together and then your wood glue will take longer to dry but that would be a solid joint. So I did that off camera just to let you know because I had some problems getting this to, to stay together. Um, okay, so the next thing uh, you're going to want to do is to sand all these parts. And all I use is uh, 120 sandpaper. And I kind of fold it like this here. And what I'm going to do is just take each one of these. And, and basically, all you're really sanding is this edge. The edge on the inside, outside, and then you flip it on the edge on the inside and outside. Just kind of get this all nice and smooth. And then you're going to work a little bit on that, that joint where you glued it together. You just kind of kind of work on that just a little bit. So you're basically just going to, I like to lay it down on the table here because you don't want to spend a whole lot of, you don't want to bend this, these parts and, and get these to twist too much because they will break. So you just kind of, kind of go around it. If you can see, 
I'm just going to go around this edge and just kind of soften everything up, maybe across the top a little bit. Just kind of go around and soften everything all up. Just take off any burrs. And you're going to do that on the inside, and you're going to do that on the outside of this uh, ring. And just I like to use it, set it on the table, and hold it really nice so you can... Um, it doesn't move around on you because these will break. And then when you get to the part right here, this is where it's uh, glued together. You can just kind of work on that just a little bit, just to kind of level that off. You can feel it, just level that off. And you're gonna work on the outside and on the inside on that joint. And you're just gonna continue all the way around this whole rim. And then you can go around the outside and do the same thing um, and across the top and then right where the joint is on the inside right here you can maybe um, take and sand right here on the inside there's a little bump right here um, I don't know if you can see it on the camera there's a little bump right here where it's glued to, where it's glued together I'm just going to take and uh, sand that down just a little bit just kind of make it all blend in nice and smooth. Make sure you get a good hold on on all these parts as you're doing this because these will twist and break really easy. So you're just gonna try to get that all, and you can hardly really see where that joint is together, where that's glued together. It's hard to even see where it's glued together. But you're gonna continue around Flip it over and do the, the edges on both sides of this whole thing of this whole thing. Just continue around until you get it all nice and sanded and softened up. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do all my sanding um, off camera because this is gonna take a little it's gonna take a little while to sand, but you're gonna want to sand it so it's all nice and smooth. Um, I wouldn't recommend using any type of power tool to sand this. I would do it all by hand because all the vibration for a power tool, you might end up breaking this. So I would do all these parts just by hand. On the base here, this is the bottom of the basket, um, you could use a power uh, palm sander on this part right here, the big flat part, but then come back and do all your edges right here and just kind of soften up all these edges um, right here. All these edges around here just kind of go around and soften up all these edges. But on the big flat part you can use your palm sander. But I would get all these all nice and sanded nice and smooth so everything feels nice and smooth and and where these joints are glued together work on that a little bit. Um, and then I'm going to do this all off camera and then I will be back to start uh, the next step of this basket. Hey guys, we are back here. Um, we've got all the parts all sanded here. Let me just move my camera. Um, everything's all sanded up, ready to get assembled together here. Um, I'm going to try to explain a bunch of this to you. We got the bottom of the basket right here. Now you want to make sure the bottom of the basket is sitting up like this. Um, I like to sit it on a piece of wood like this in case in case I need to adjust my basket. I can pick the whole thing up. Um, so ha have your basket set like that with the with the uh, 18 degrees going out at an angle like this. Um, now here's all your uh, rings. I got them made in a stack. Now to Put your basket together you're going to take the smallest ring right here from the inside and you're going to turn it this way and set it on the basket base right on the bottom and you'll see right where these uh pieces come out like this this is where this piece that goes in goes on there it creates that little little gap in the bottom right here and then you take your next piece right here and that one just comes straight, and that'll sit right on there, like that. And then you take your next piece, and you're just going to turn it and set that on top there. 
Then you take your last piece and keep it straight and then set it right on top of there. Um, that is all set up the way the basket is. Now, off camera, what I did, and then obviously you got your top that's going to go on here like this here, but we're going to, we're not going to need the top right now. You got to put all this together before you put the top on. The next thing was to do all your thin pieces that slide down. All these pieces right here in the basket. Let me see if I can show you. All these pieces in the basket here. Um, these red pieces that slide down in here. Then my little bitty thin strips of wood. Um, now that's where it gets kind of tricky. You're going to have to, um, with this basket being the size that it is, because I enlarged the basket to 11 inches by uh, 11 inches by 16 and three quarter inches. Um, I have all these uh, thin pieces here that I cut. Now my pieces I got painted orange and I got some pieces uh, painted black because um, I'm going to do what I'm going to call as a Halloween basket here. So but with that size of basket, I figured out that the pieces have to be about an eighth inch. Let me see what this is. This is 964, 964 inch thick. And these are, these are cut from a three quarter inch uh, board. Um, anywhere from an eighth inch to 964, um, depending on. I was shooting for an eighth inch, but I ended up getting nine sixty-fourths um, inches. Let's see here. This is nine sixty-fourths. And the way I cut these pieces, because if you make this basket smaller, these pieces are going to have to be smaller. If you make it bigger, then the strips are going to have to be bigger. The size depends on the size of your basket. And the way I cut these strips, I'm going to move the camera and I'm going to show you how I cut these strips. You can either cut them on your bandsaw or your table saw. Um, but uh, So I'll move my camera here and I'm going to show you how I cut these strips and um, we'll go from there. Okay, here at the table saw, um, what I got is a jig here. It's a thin strip jig. <laughs> Um, you can buy this at any woodcraft store or um, Rockler Woodworking's got it. It just attaches to your top of your table saw in the miter joint here. Um, and it's, you set it up to cut them. Uh, it's got little measurements along the jig right here. And instead of trying to cut a thin strip up against your blade here, you're cutting it off to the edge here. So basically you're taking any piece of scrap piece of wood and pushing it right up against that um, jig right here. And that jig has got um, two rollers right here. And I would, if you buy a jig, I would suggest getting the one with the two rollers. They do have them with just one. But you just move your piece of wood up here. Now with this jig, you're gonna be able to cut every strip piece of wood the exact same thickness every time. Move it up against the jig, lock your fence down, and then we're just going to make uh, one cut. We're going to push this through. Now here's a thin piece of wood for a strip. Now you just grab your board again. Put it up against your fence right here. And now we're going to move the fence up against that jig again. That wood's up against that jig. Lock your fence down. And now you got two pieces, two thin strips, and they are exactly see right here they are exactly the same thickness and every time you use you run this board through every time you run this board through 
you're going to get the exact same thickness of strips every time. You just have to set this jig up um, with this fence. And basically, the first time you set it up, this knob comes loose here and you take it. And you're just going to have to, on this measurement right here, on this tape measure right here, it's got measurements, eighth inch, eighth inch uh, increments. So you're just going to have to move this to, to a measurement, make a cut, see if it's the thickness you want. If it's not, just make your adjustments on this piece right here until you get it to adjustment um, the thickness you want. But basically, this, that's how it is. Every time you're going to cut thin strips. It's a nice little tool to have in your woodworking shop because you can use it for all other types of stuff too. So we're going to head back to the bench. I'll show you. And then what I did on them pieces, um, we're going to head back to the bench and I'll explain something else on them pieces. So we're going to head back. Okay, so on these pieces, I figured out that I needed, let me see once here, for these short pieces on this basket, let me show you, on these short pieces, you got short pieces and you got long pieces. The short ones are three and a half, the long ones are uh, five and a half. And what I mean by that is you're going to put these short ones in here and you'll see that the short ones are going to sit. If you can see right here, these short ones are going to sit. Let me see. They're going to sit on these pieces that come out. They're going to sit here, here, and here. Then we're going to pieces that come out. That's where your short ones and then your long ones are going to come down all the way down the side of your uh, bottom. So we got this on here. We'll just start sliding in some of these short ones. Now these are going to be longer than what you need them. And the reason why I make them longer is because once I get things glued in, I can just cut this top. I can just cut this top off flush with this top ring. I like to make them longer. So you're just going to sit and go around put these short ones in. I don't see if you can see what I'm doing here. I'm going to put all these short pieces in. And they should just slide right down. And that's where the importance of um, getting these the right thickness. You shouldn't have to force anything down in this basket. Otherwise, you're going to end up with uh, things breaking. All right. It should all fit down in there with no problem. Shouldn't have to force anything down anywhere. And we got one more right here. And you can feel the basket's already starting to get a little tighter just with them pieces in there. Now we go with the longer pieces right here. And we're just going to put them in here. Now these. These are going to slide all the way down to the bottom of this base. And I'm just getting everything all dry filled right now. Nothing's glued right now. We're just sticking all these pieces in here. 
and that's why it's very important to get these strips the exact get these strips cut you might have to play around with the thickness but they uh, they need to be they can't be too thin or too thick you're just going to have to play around with the thickness to get it set just right because you don't want to have to force these in here should slide in nice and easy. You can see the basket's actually uh, getting nice and snug. Got one more right here. There. And that's why I cut I cut long ones first and then I cut the two I cut the five and a half and the three and a half out of one of these. So you only got to cut you need 18 pieces of wood right here. Just cut nine long ones, and then you can get, get all your pieces out of this the nine. Just move my camera here a little bit. Okay, so we have the basket all basically dry fitted. We got the orange are the short ones, the black are the long ones. And now we're going to be ready to glue things together um, one thing you notice in these baskets here let me bring this up you want to try to keep these rings kind of stacked on top of each other you don't want to have big gaps in between there because that'll give your basket a nice tight uh, clean look so you can what I do to, to keep that is I will uh, Take a board here, and I got this weight. I don't even know how much weight it is. It probably could be a little heavier, but I take that weight, and I'll set that on that basket. Now, that's that's weighing that basket down, and everything is in place. If you can see, I got that weight right here, and it's I put a board across here, and now that's, that's weighing that basket down. Everything is sitting right where it needs to be. In place and what you're gonna do is you got to glue the short ones in first the long ones are in just to keep everything in place so nothing moves around you got to glue the short ones in first and then that, that's what we're gonna do next is we're gonna start gluing these short ones in it's a little tricky I'm getting them glued in and clamped but um and then like I say I always put my basket on a piece of board so I can move it because right now if you pick the basket up these long ones would fall through the fall through the bottom so everything's in there nice so we're gonna be back in a minute and we're gonna start gluing these uh, orange ones in first and like I say I cut them longer after we glue them in then we're gonna end up cutting them off along the top right here so it's flush because then we need to uh, um, pull the black ones out, put your top one, top ring on, and then put the black ones back in. So we'll be back in a minute to get started on the gluing. 